Hi, my name is Justin Schuff, and I'm the founder and run our engineering team here at Patch My PC. In this video, we're going to be reviewing a common error that we've been seeing where when you right click an update and choose to publish the third party update content, you might get an error that says update content underscore no meta and then the update publishing fails. We're going to review why that happens and more importantly, how to fix that. So to repro this error, I'm going to go ahead and choose to publish third party software update content and click OK. Now, before we review the log, this specific error is actually called out within the Microsoft docs under known errors. Uh, it's under the section here that says if a third party update synchronization cannot publish content to a metadata only update, uh, sometimes that scenario can happen when the third party update was previously published from a separate tool other than the SCCM console. So what that essentially means is let's say that you had configured our publishing service uh, to publish our catalog. So we can see that we did actually enable the updates for Chrome under our publishing service with metadata only. So that means that the updates were initially published through our service prior to us ever even entering a catalog into SCCM. So uh, if we go ahead and look at the log file, we'll review what that log looks like. So when you attempt to publish the content, it's going to log out under the SMS ISV updates underscore sync agent dot log. So if we review this log file, we can in fact see that when I zoom in here, that it is giving us an error saying that the update could not publish. So if we look here, we can see update content underscore no underscore metadata and then uh, it says that it failed to update in the following line so what this means is that if we look at this log file it says that there's no synchronization record for the update that's trying to be published so uh since that happens because our updates were initially published using our publishing service from patch my pc this could also occur if you ever published our catalog using scup so any method other than what's available on the console here under third-party update catalogs if you've ever published any updates using a method outside of here if you attempt to publish it with full content directly in the console you're going to receive an error saying that the update content could not be found no meta so let's review what it should look like when you publish an update and then we'll review how to resolve this issue. So if I add a custom catalog, this is the way if you plan to ever use the end console features where you want to right click and publish content, you're going to want to make sure that you only publish the catalog directly from that console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new catalog that only contains the Firefox updates directly from our uh, catalog using the product parameter that you can optionally append here. So we don't publish the whole catalog in this demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and add that right click that catalog and choose to subscribe. So it starts to download. So we're going to do that. We're going to accept our certificate here and then choose next and then finish. Now within the next few seconds, we're going to see that within that same log file, it's going to start synchronizing the updates and we'll see it publishing from this component since we added the catalog directly in the SCCM console here. So here we go, we can see that it downloaded the Firefox catalog, it then added a few certificates, and then it published the updates. Now this is an important note to look at here. So when we look at where it's publishing the actual update, we can see this information here that it updated the history record for Firefox because it did not previously exist and it was never published to WSUS. So what the history record means is if we actually query the SCCM database. So I, I just clicked on my database and chose query. There's this uh, table called the ISV published updates. Now this is probably more detailed than we need to go, but we do like to make sure that you understand specifically why things happen and why they're failing. Now what we can see is that both of those Firefox updates did in fact update the history records within the database. Now the history records is what actually is used when you right click a third party software update and choose to publish the content. So the history records don't get created for updates that are published outside of the console. You need to make sure that updates that you want to publish using the right click action come directly from the third party update catalog because when they get published from SCCM, 
they're not going to, or if they get published outside of SCCM, they're not going to add this entry into the database. So the publish option is not going to know where to get that content. And that's going to be why you see that error, no metadata found. Now, for example, let's say that you even come back into the third party update catalog and you add a catalog. And let's say that we add the catalog for the Chrome update. So we'll just call this patch my PC and then patch my PC dash Google Chrome since we're only adding the Chrome product. Okay. And then we'll do next here, next, and then we'll quickly subscribe to this catalog. So right click subscribe. We'll update that, download the content, view cert, and then okay. And then next here, and then next. So what we'll see here in a few seconds uh, within that same component, it's gonna start evaluating that catalog that it downloads and choose to publish the updates. But we'll review what actually happens in that log file. Okay, so we can see that it processed the catalog, but more importantly, if we look at where it's actually viewing the updates within the catalog that it's checking whether they need to be published, we can see that for that Chrome update, since it was already published outside of SECM from our publishing service from Patch My PC, we can see that it's actually skipped the update because it sees that it's already been published to WSUS. So what happens in this scenario, if we've refreshed that query to see all the published updates directly from SECM, we can in fact see that it's still only the two Firefox updates. So even if we come back into the console after adding that catalog that contains those updates, it still is going to fail to download because the updates have already been published. So it's going to ignore them from SECM. So those entries aren't gonna exist where SECM knows how to download that content. So we can in fact see that we get that same exact error, even though we did in fact add that catalog after the fact here. Now we have had a few customers that said that they've never published our catalog outside of the SCCM console using our service or SCUP, but they still receive this issue. So we've, we've had a few customers that have mentioned that. So there could potentially be an issue where when the update gets published in some uh, small scenarios, it may not properly edit the table in the database to actually show the entry for where to download it, as well as the hash. So it is possible you may even run into this issue if you're not even publishing from another method. Now the workarounds that we're gonna mention here would be applicable for that scenario as well. So the first option that we have to work around this is you will need to install, install our publishing service using the MSI regardless of whether you've published before with that. Now, the first option that we can do, let's go ahead and go to that Chrome update. Now, for the 32-bit version of Chrome, we're going to go ahead and right-click that. We can see that we've already enabled, and we're going to choose to publish it with full content. So that's going to be the first uh, method that we can use to work around this. We can essentially publish the content from our service rather than that right-click action within SECM. So I'm going to go ahead and run a sync. And what we're going to see is that update's going to get downloaded directly from our service rather than going through that SMS ISV sync agent component within SCCM. So we'll wait a few minutes while this publishes. So within our patch my PC log file, we can of course see that it did go out, it downloaded the latest Google Chrome installer, and then it published it to WSUS with full content. Since we also had the option within our publishing service to automatically synchronize our SCCM software update point, we can also see that if we come into our console here and refresh this, we now can see that the Chrome update is published with full content. So here's that 32-bit version now published with full content. So you wouldn't even have to right click and publish the content step here because we handle that directly from our publishing service. Now this is actually one of the advantages compared to the current versions up to 1902 of SCCM. They don't support automating that option with full content. After the catalog syncs, you always have to right click and choose to publish content. So this is one of the advantage, if we look at our comparison chart, why a lot of customers, customers might choose our publishing service over the end console publishing today, because it can essentially be fully automated because we can publish that with full content. There's a few other customizations. I'll include these in, in the list here if you wanna check this out a little bit more. Um, but essentially, if you're using our publishing service, you don't have to come in here and add the catalog directly in the console. So keep that in mind. So that's option number one. So for any updates that are failing to right click and publish the content, you could optionally come in here 
enable the products within our service if you haven't already, and make sure that they're set to publish with full content. Now, the second option that we'll review now is going to be, we could delete the update from WSUS in order to have the SCCM catalog sync re-update the table within the database to let SCCM know where to download those updates. So in order to do that, if we click on the advanced tab and click on the run uh, modify published updates wizard, we can see that we show you all the updates that have been published. Now, by default, we don't allow you to delete the update unless you go and edit a registry value, just because there's only certain scenarios where deleting an update is appropriate. This would be one of those. Uh, now, in order to enable that option, you need to come into HQ Local Machine Software, Patch My PC Publishing Service, and then right click, create a new uh, D word value 32 bit called Enable Delete Updates. And we're going to set that value to one. And then if we come back into the tool and click on run the wizard again, we can now see the delete option is enabled. So if you want to go this method, we would want to select all the updates that you're having issues publishing. So in this demonstration, we're going to do the 64 bit version of Chrome because we did not publish that one with full content using our service. So you would come in and select all the updates that you're getting no meta only when you publish, and you should only select those ones that you're having that specific issue with. We then choose to delete that update and then OK. And that will then delete the update from WSUS. Now, what's going to happen in that case, the next time that we sync that Chrome catalog uh, and click Sync Now, within the ISV Sync Agent log, if I open that up, what we're going to notice is that it will actually republish the update because it's not going to detect that it's already existing within WSUS. Okay, so we can now see that the catalog has synchronized and let's take a look and see if we can find some information here. Okay, so it looks like it actually skipped processing because it detected the catalog had not changed since we last published it. So just to simulate this scenario, I'm going to come in and copy that URL and we're just going to delete this catalog and re-add it just so we can see that Chrome update republish here. So I'm going to unsubscribe really quick, choose to delete my catalog, and then okay. Now, if you're subscribed to our primary catalog, it does get changed about daily. So you would probably, the next time that you sync, it, it's very likely after you delete those updates that you would actually have it just process and do everything right away. But in the event that you delete the updates and it's saying that the catalog has not changed on our server side when it downloads it, you could just unsubscribe and resubscribe to that catalog to clear out that hash value to have it reprocess all those updates that uh, synchronized since that last attempt. So I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to our catalog, accept the certificate just like we did before, and then choose next here. So we'll give that a second, but it should kick in and start processing this here in a sec. Okay, so we can now see that it did, of course, process that catalog since it was re-added. So the important piece here, we can now see that when we look at that Chrome update, we can see that it does detect that it needs to synchronize and publish the update. And then if we look at where it actually has published it, we can now see this time that it did in fact update the record because it republished uh, the update to WSUS. So if we look back in that table within SCCM where it caches the published updates and we do a quick query here, let's run a quick look here. Uh, it looks like I just queried it while it was offline here, but we can now see that the Chrome update is of course showing up as published. So if we come back into our console, click on the updates, and now if we right click that 64 bit version of Chrome, which was previously having the issue, so I'm gonna to choose to publish the content, we'll come back into that ISV sync agent log, and here in a second, we're gonna see that it can now find the download content from Chrome, and then it should publish with full content directly from the console. Okay, so we can now see that it's attempting to publish the update. So we can of course see that it's downloading the content directly from Google. So it looks like it did find that information successfully. So once it downloads, it will go ahead and publish and we'll pause it while this process completes. Okay, so we can now see the publishing has completed. So we will need to come in and quickly synchronize our software update point. And if you review the wsyncmanager.log, once that finishes, we should now see the update is showing up with the green icon, meaning that it's been published with full content. 
At that point, we should be able to right click those updates and choose to download and deploy them into a deployment package. So if I right click and refresh now, we can of course see that both of these have now been published with full content. So we went through the uh, workaround for option one where you can just choose to publish the updates with full content directly from our publishing service. And then we went through the process of how you could delete the updates and then have a SCCM republish them if you prefer to go that method. Now we have been working with the product group on this issue. We've been seeing this uh, more often than probably what should be happening, I would say, where people are publishing outside of the console and then they try to use the console to publish the content. What we're hoping to have happen is, in addition to um, the check that happens where if it sees that the update has been published in WSUS, it will essentially skip uh, updating the record even if it doesn't exist. What we would like to see here is, and we reported this to see if it could get added, is uh, during that check to see if the update's already been published in the event that it was published using Scup or our service outside of SCCM, it will also check that SMS uh, sync uh, for published updates directly in the database. And if that update doesn't exist there, even if it exists in WSUS, to go ahead and update that record to help reduce how often this could potentially happen in the event that you are testing multiple publishing scenarios and then decided to stay with the in console publishing feature. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions about this, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.